tucked away in such an unassuming neighbourhood stands an enormous name in British art and it is one of the most famous of the 100 plus sculptures in Harlow. Given a Grade 2 listing by English Heritage in 1998 and standing at 10 feet high is contrapuntal forms, one of the largest sculptures that Barbara Hepworth had attempted at the time. In 1953, Harlow Art Trust was founded with the aim of commissioning and purchasing sculpture to bring beauty to the public spaces of the post-war new town of Harlow. The Harlow Art Trust were uncompromising in their belief that the sculpture should be more than mere decoration. The art should be part of the fabric of everyday life and owned by the people who live and work around it. Dame Jocelyn Barbara Hepworth was an English artist and sculptor whose works were among the earliest abstract sculptures produced. Her work exemplifies modernism in its move towards abstraction. Her lyrical forms and feeling for material made her one of the most influential sculptors of the mid 20th century. The stone sculpture was originally commissioned by the Arts Council for the World Fair as part of the 1951 Festival of Britain. When the festival closed, the Arts Council presented the sculpture to Harlow Newtown in Essex. The sculpture was meant to be relocated to a more central location once an appropriate area was found. But the move was stopped by the protest of local residents that wanted it to remain. So, what draws me to the sculpture? For me, contrapuntal forms chimes with the utopian vision for Harlow Newtown. It also speaks to the long tradition of British sculpture and radical newness of this type of carving and working. Carved from two monumental blocks of Irish blue limestone, the sculpture shows two separate abstract figures. I am drawn to the utopian gesture of contrapuntal forms. It is aware of itself and its aspirations. The two figures appear to be saying, we are here. The sculpture presents the possibility of a new life and society through a modernist, stripped down aesthetic. The figures, with their heads ostensibly looking outwards towards the horizon, are enormous. But they represent us. They are among us. We are them as much as they are us. This sculpture shows me that artists are really the first builders of utopia. Through their vision of what things could look like or how things could be represented. The holes running through both figures are located where the chest or the lungs might be. They almost remind me of an acoustic guitar. There's a suggestion that the sound travels through both forms. Perhaps there's a conversation. The hollows also break up that kind of heaviness of the monolith. In later works, Hepworth adds strings to sculptures, mimicking the musical, but also giving the work a different language and tension through its visual association with musicality. Contrapuntal refers to a musical term, like several of her works made at the time, which draw on experimental musical forms. Hepworth integrated her love of music into her working routines with the actual physical rhythm of carving, the intense pleasure derived from tools and craftsmanship. Direct carving is something that really draws me to Hepworth's work. Her technique was instrumental in modernizing carving. Prior to this, the pointing technique was the prevalent method of working with stone. 
it involved the transfer of a plaster model onto a piece of stone. It was a very mechanical process. In contrast, Hepworth carved straight into the stone. That's why there is an immediacy and a spontaneity to that way of making. The sheer force of will makes Barbara Hepworth a real inspiration to me as an artist. Hepworth was a female sculptor working in a time when she had to fight prejudice to gain recognition in her lifetime. Even today, there are not many women working with stone. She really was one of the few female artists that managed to achieve international prominence in her lifetime. When it first came to Glebelands, residents were shocked by its newness. Now they don't want it to leave. Contrapuntal forms remains an important part of Barbara Hepworth's legacy.